And then you've got your types of parasites. Um, I'll start with the uh, overall, um, like the overall different options you have, and then I'll go into like the specific names and how they uh, how they grade them or um, um, group them together. So your types of parasites, you can have an endoparasite. What does that sound like to you? Uh, inside. Yep, so found within host cells and tissues. How about an ectoparasite? Outside. Outside. Yep, so found on the host surface, skin, or outer mucosal area. Skin or outer mucosal area. So what's an example? So if you have an endoparasite, um, what might be an example of that? Or, uh, like hookworms. Exactly. So like all your nematodes and stuff are going to be endoparasite, uh, where all, all your arthropods are going to be ectoparasites. So like your lice and your spiders and stuff like that are considered ectoparasites. Then you have facultated um, versus obligate. And you know, you kind of go over those in micro a little bit. So you've got facultative. What does that mean? They're gonna be generally opportunistic. And I always remember this as like faculty at, you know, like I'm faculty at the college, um, faculty make do with what they have. So they're opportunistic. They can live with or without um, an organism. So they can may exist as free living um, or a parasite. So it can be free living or a parasite. So facultative works with what it has. Whereas obligate, they are obligated um, to be in a host. Must spend part or all of life cycle in a host. So which one's more restricted, facultative or obligate? Obligated. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, our last one is going to be accidental. So accidental are what we consider um, zoonotic infections or zoonosis. Do you all know what zoonotic infections are? No. Oh, animal, animal related infections. Exactly. So accidental is the parasite normally lives in or on a host other than humans, but can infect humans accidentally. So humans are not um, the, um, write it differently. Normally live on a host other than humans. And then since I put zoonosis in the parentheses, I'll put normal host is animal. And then it's good to know the overall classifications of parasites. And now there's tons of parasites, like tons in the whole world and every, um, every corner of the earth and the oceans. Um, but for this class, yours is going to be specifically diagnostic parasitology, um, just like diagnostic microbiology. And so you'll be learning about the ones that only infect and harm humans and not, so remember there's a broader range of parasites than just this, but this is what you need to learn as a lab tech um, working with humans. So one of the big classifications is going to be helminths. 
and your helmets are going to be worms. Just worms, period. And I meant to find a cute little picture. I bet I can't go fast. Let me... Would that be like the pinworm, the round worm? Yep, any kind of worm. Okay. share this one. I think this one's cute. <laughs> yeah, so your helmets are worms. Crop that down a little. an overall broad classification. And so within this classi classification of helmets, you have nematodes. And what are nematodes? What kind of worms are they? Um, all your helmets are, uh, are described by their body characteristics. So round, the round worms? Yes. Um, so let me put that here. Helmets, worms, um, <clears throat> they're grouped by body type. So your nematodes are your round worms. Um, the way I remember that one is nema is round. And I just kept telling that to myself over and over. But if you have a better way, feel free to shout that out. So nematodes are your round worms. Next is going to be cestodes. Those are going to be tapeworms. Um, for cestodes, I put Cecil always has a tape measure. Or you could probably just say Cecil always has tape, but I think of Cecil as like a, as like a construction worker. And then you've got trematodes. And trematodes are your flatworms and flukes. So flatworms and flukes, I've got a little better one to remember this. Um, and I remember it by um, trema. Sounds like tremor. And tremors flatten the ground. Y'all know what tremors are? like a mini earthquake. Oh yeah. Flatten the ground and it's just a fluke. So like since they're less than a real earthquake, you know, they say something's just a fluke. It's like, you know, whatever. They're not taking it very seriously. So trematodes, you got tremor for tremor. Um, it flattens the ground and it's just like a fluke. So flat. So, and, I still don't understand what a fluke is. 
A fluke is, uh, it's just a type of worm. So what's the difference between a fluke and a tapeworm? Aren't they both flat? Uh, yes, but tapeworms are se have segmented bodies. Let me show you. So a tapeworm, they have, uh, and I think they're called, um, uh, starts with a T, um, tegments. They have these tegments. So see here um, how they have all these little segments? Right. Whereas a fluke. I need to specify. It's like flat without all those segments. Oh, and a lot smaller. Yeah. Yeah, smaller and thicker. It looks like a leech. Yes. Like a leech or a leaf or somewhere in between a leech and a leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Visually, that makes more sense now. Yeah, than words. I, I get that. So these are, um, so now if it asks you about a helminth, that can include nematodes, cestodes, and trematodes. If it asks you about a nematode, that's specifically your roundworms. Um, so keep in mind that nematodes, cestodes, and trematodes, and everyone underneath those categories are all helminths. They're all worms. And so then your next one is going to be your protozoa. You've got protozoa and they are unicellular, eukaryotic, and microorganisms. But I think you already know they're microorganisms. They have a couple different forms. They have trophozoites and cysts. Um, and in this group include amoeba. And then ciliates. Oh, and sorry, this group is all um, is all grouped together about how uh, how they move. So forms group by forms of move, movement. Okay, it's still on the Word document, right? Y'all can still see the Word document? Yeah, yeah. Okay. side. Okay, so our, we've got our helminths, which is our worms. Now we've got protozoa. And so your protozoa are based on groups of, uh, grouped on how they move. So some of them have ciliates, some have, uh, some have flagellates, and then some are considered to not have organelles for movement. So you've got amoeba, um, which have little pseudopodia to move. And then you've got your ciliates that have cilia. You've got flagellates that guess what? Guess what they use? If ciliates have cilia, what do flagellates have? Flagella. Flagella, yep. And then you've got sporozoa. And um, what it says is they have no organelles for movement. They do have organelles for movement. They're just not under these other categories. So it's kind of like an other category.
And so I'm going to put the no organelles for movement, but keep in mind, they do have organelles. They just don't fall under the other categories. Like they have ways that they move. Oh, and sorry, I forgot to tell y'all one for, for helmets. Um, I always remember to, um, so you know how it's nematodes, cestodes, trematodes, toads, um, toads eat worms, and they're round. Eat worms, and they are round. So like the little wormy bodies. And then our last one is going to be um, like your arthropoda. Arthropods. And these are going to be like your bugs. And so you have two types of bugs. You either have insects, like fleas and lice, or you have um, arachnids, like ticks and mites. 